and uh, the complications during this period, and also about maternal mortality. Regarding hemorrhage, whether anti- and postpartum hemorrhage during a pregnancy, mostly or more than a quarter of all maternal deaths are due to hemorrhage. Uh, uh, hemorrhage could be uh, early in a pregnancy before 22 weeks of gestation, and this is usually due to complication of abortion. And in this case, of course, uh, the mother uh, needs to be referred urgently to hospital, but initial measures should be done at primary healthcare level, like detection of her blood pressure, setting up IV fluid, for example, and then refer her for a second, secondary healthcare facility where there is a skilled attendance can be done and blood transfusion if needed. Antipartum hemorrhage, this is vaginal bleeding that occurred after 22 weeks of pregnancy and before delivery of the baby. Uh, the most commonly causes of this hemorrhage, antipartum hemorrhage, is placenta previa and abruptio placenta. Of course, this is very dangerous, any bleeding before delivery considered to be dangerous and the mother should only refer urgently to hospital where there is facilities of blood transfusion. Postpartum hemorrhage can be defined as loss of 500 mL or more of blood from genital tract after delivery of the baby. The rate of this complication may range from 10 to 20 percent. And of course, any bleeding in this postpartum period is, only, uh, is also sorry, considered dangerous and blood transfusion is often a life saving. Diabetes and uh, pregnancy, this is very important complication or health problem during the pregnancy. An established diabetes, that is mothers with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, have poor perinatal outcomes, even with good obstetric care. Perinatal mortality rates among women with type 1 or type 2 diabetes is about four times than in general population. And also, the rate of congenital anomalies is also higher in those women with uh, diabetes by uh, double times than in general population. These uh, women need to be referred to a higher level because they need to be monitored and uh, controlled for their blood glucose and also they need to be, uh, sur uh, especially the fetus, need to be surveyed, surveyed by ultrasound for any anomalies if present, and also checking the, uh, the mother for any complications of diabetes like retinal or renal complications. Also, such women need to be supplemented with folic acid uh, to prevent congenital anomalies. Gestational diabetes, on the other hand, is sugar in the urine detected during pregnancy. So it is considered as biochemical manifestation rather than a disease as it is. And those women with uh, this gestational diabetes have a slightly increased risk of perinatal mortality. So not like the women with other uh, with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. So the most important adverse outcome for women with gestational diabetes is mac macrosomia, which is a larger than average baby. Regarding screening or checking mothers for diabetes mellitus, all mothers should be, all pregnant women should be screened for diabetes between 24th to 28th weeks of gestation. 
And for the high-risk groups, the checking or screening should be at booking visit, at the initial visit. For example, women uh, who have positive family history or obese or older age groups. Diabetes, uh, the rate has been found to be of diabetes among the pregnancy 1 to 12 percent. And it has been found also that 15 percent of women with gestational diabetes may progress to permanent diabetes mellitus after delivery. So, regarding screening of mothers for diabetes, first we should ask and check and record data related to risk factors of diabetes, like family history of diabetes, mellitus, obesity, by uh, measuring height and weight and uh, the mass index, also, older than 25 years of age, women are considered also at higher risk of diabetes. And history of birth of macrosomic baby. Then, we should do screening protocol for gestational diabetes mellitus, starting by 50 grams, one hour oral glucose challenge. Here we can do it and have poor perinatal outcomes. And the perinatal mortality among these mothers are about four times than in general population. It's not واضح. واضح دكتورة. Okay. Congenital anomalies, those women have uh, double the rate than in general population. Those women need to be referred to higher level care, secondary care level, to control for their blood glu glucose and uh, so, uh, those women, as we said, need to be uh, referred to higher care facilities to control for blood glucose and surveillance for fetal anomalies and also to check for their, uh, their sorry, renal and retinal complications. Uh, for gestational diabetes, as we said, it is a sugar in urine detected during a pregnancy. So it is, a, it is a biochemical manifestation other than a disease by itself. Those women have slightly increased risk of perinatal mortality uh, than in general population, not like women with established diabetes. The only or the most important adverse outcome is macrosomia which is a larger than average baby. So, screening for mothers, pregnant women, for diabetes should be done between 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. And for high-risk groups, it should be done earlier at initial or booking visit. For example, obese women, or older age women. The rate of diabetes was found to be from 1 to 12 percent during a pregnancy, and 15 percent of those women may progress to have diabetes later in their life. So, uh, to 
assess women with diabetes, first we should ask about the main uh, or assess for main risk factors for diabetes. Family history, obesity, older than 25 years of age, and history of birth of macrosomic baby. So, you are going to screen for gestational diabetes by doing 50 grams one hour oral glucose challenge. Uh, this can be done at any time without asking the mother to be uh, fasting. So, if the result of this test was found to be that plasma, gl plasma glucose is more than 140 milligram per deciliter, this means that there is no gestational diabetes mellitus. So, no further treatment or advice is needed. But if the result was found that uh, plasma glucose is 140 or more among these women, so further assessment should be done by 100 gram three hours oral glucose, toler glucose tolerance test after eight to 12 hours overnight fast. So according to the results of this uh, three hours of glucose tolerance test, if two or more of the following is found, we consider the mother to have gestational diabetes mellitus. So after one hour, if a plasma glucose is 180 or more, or after two hours, plasma glucose 155 or more, or after three hours, plasma glucose is 140 or more. So the mother here should be referred to hospital for controlling her diet, plasma glucose, and assessment of fetus. Intranatal care. This can be defined as uh, the care that is given during childbirth. So, in spite that childbirth is a normal physiologic process, we, uh, we also expect complications to be occur. The most important of these complications is septicemia, which, uh, which may occur if there is unskilled uh, septic uh, manipulation of childbirth, also, tetanus neonatorum due to using unsterilized instruments. So, effective intranatal care is needed and mandatory even if we have normal vaginal delivery, with emphasis on the cleanliness. This, by cleanliness, we mean clean hands during delivery, clean surface of delivery, and clean cutting of the cord, and also keeping the birth canal uh, clean with minimum uh, intervention and manipulation. Of course, uh, hospitals, healthcare centers should be equipped uh, for delivery with midwifery kits and all sterile towels, uh, instruments, um, soap, antiseptics should be provided. Also, there are uh, delivery kits should be provided uh, with basic hygiene for delivery at home. Uh, the, the aims of good intranatal care are thorough asepsis, delivery with minimum injury to the infant and mother, and readiness to deal with any complication of, of, of occurs, uh, like uh, bleeding. Postnatal care is care of mother and the newborn after delivery. So it has two areas of care, care for the mother and care for the newborn. So if delivery is at hospital, 
it is the responsibility for both obstetrician and pediatrician. The objective of postpartum care is to prevent complications of postpartum period, especially postpartum hemorrhage or infection, also to provide care for rapid restoration of the mother to optimum health, to check the efficacy of a breastfeeding and provide family planning services and provide basic health education to mother and the family. The main complications of postpartum period is perperal sepsis. This is the infection of genital tract within three weeks after delivery. Thrombophilitis, this infection of the veins of legs and usually associated with varicose veins. Second hemorrhage is uh, also an important complication in the postpartum period, which is bleeding, vaginal bleeding at any time from six hours after delivery to the end of perperium, which is six weeks. Complications during postpartum period is urinary tract infection and mastitis. During this period, we should advise and counsel mother for certain things and issues regarding uh, basic care of the mother, her hygiene, and care of the baby, and also advice about routine visits during this period to the health center. Uh, we also discuss with the mother the importance and duration of breastfeeding, about uh, uh, harmful habits like smoking, drug abuse, danger signs that may occur during this period and family planning. Of course, the routine visits in the postpartum period, we have two visits in this period. The first is within the first week after delivery and preferably to be on the fourth day. The second visit is from four to six weeks and preferably to be on the fourth week. Follow-up visits, we should also advise mother about follow-up visits for certain health problems or symptoms that may occur during postpartum period. For example, women with fever, lower urinary tract infection, perineal infection or perineal pain should come after two days. Other health problems like hypertension, urinary incontinence to be followed after one week, severe anemia, postpartum blues or depression, HIV positive women to be followed after two weeks, and those with moderate anemia to be followed after four weeks. Advice on danger signs. There are uh, danger signs that we should tell the mothers about them and advise her to come immediately without waiting, whether at day or night, to the health facility. First, vaginal bleeding. Vagin by vaginal bleeding, we mean that when bleeding increases rather than decreases after delivery, or at, uh, uh, like if mother has uh, two or three pads soaked in 20 to 30 minutes after delivery, which considered as heavy bleeding. Or the other danger sign is convulsion, fast or difficult to breathing, fever and too weak to get out of bed, severe abdominal pain, 
because this may suggest toxemia of pregnancy or pulmonary embolism. Uh, other signs that we should inform the mothers about them, uh, and in this case, they don't need to go urgently, but to go as soon as possible to a healthcare facility. These signs are fever, abdominal pain, feels ill, uh, when the breasts are swollen, red or tender, urine dribbling or pain on micturition, pain in the perineum or draining pus, and foul-smelling lotion. Maternal mortality. By maternal mortality, we mean the death of woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and site of a pregnancy, from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management, but not from accidental or incidental causes. So if a woman, pregnant woman, dies while she is pregnant due to, for example, car accident, this is not included in maternal mortality. Uh, maternal mortality as a formula, it is the total number of female deaths due to complications of a pregnancy, childbirth, or within 42 days of delivery from peripheral causes in an area during a given year out of total number of live births in the same area and years. So the numerator is the number of female deaths. The denominator is the total number of live births in, uh, uh, an, in, in an area, yeah, a certain geographical area, and in a certain year. This is, of course, multiplied by 100,000. This is uh, how to uh, calculate maternal mortality rate. Uh, 99 percent of all maternal deaths or maternal mortality occur in developing countries so in developed countries only one percent which is a big difference between developed and developing countries regarding maternal mortality and it has been found that between the year 2000 and 2017 the maternal mortality rate per 100,000 live births have decreased by about 38% worldwide. Uh, reason for death are mainly due to complications and uh, following the pregnancy and childbirth. Most of complications develop during the pregnancy. Other are uh, occur or exist before pregnancy, but they are aggravated and became worse during the pregnancy. The maternal deaths may be classified into two groups. Direct obstetric deaths, those result from obstetric complications of a pregnant state, like during the pregnancy, labor, or perperium from interventions, incorrect treatment, or chain of events related uh, to any events of uh, the above. Indirect causes result from previous existing disease that developed during the pregnancy, which was not due to direct obstetric cause. So we have maternal mortality rate, uh, direct obstetric rate, and indirect obstetric rate which are important measures to improve the quality of maternity services. About 75% of all maternal mortality deaths are due to the following causes. Severe bleeding, infections, high blood pressure, like preeclampsia uh, or toxemia of pregnancy, 
complications from delivery and unsafe abortion. In Iran, uh, maternal mortality ratio or rate was estimated to be 291 per 100,000 live births in 1999. In 2006 to, to uh, uh, 2007, the figure was 84 per 100,000 live births, which was estimated by WHO. So there was a big decrease in the rate uh, during these years. In 2012, it was 63. And uh, as you have taken before, uh, the Millennium Development Goals regarding our country was to reach 29 uh, by the year 2015. But still, this figure was not reached until now. Uh, as has been found or estimated by our Ministry of Health uh, for the year 2017, the main or direct causes of maternal mortality, according to this rates of MOH was found to be hemorrhage as 32.4 percent, preeclampsia or eclampsia 14.5 percent, thromboembolism 14.4 percent, rupture uterus 4.7 percent, and sepsis by 4.4 percent. The majority maternal deaths reported uh, has poor care coverage, especially antenatal care. And the coverage of the first visit was about 78%, so that only 78% of mothers has first antenatal care. The fourth visit was only 50% in the year 2011. Of course, uh, this might be explained by lack of awareness of these mothers about the importance, importance sorry, of the antenatal care visits and also a lack of confidence in a primary health care services. Uh, this, this is our lecture for today and uh, you will have uh, a quiz about uh, this lecture uh, of course, the time will be...